Welcome to the Northern Ants channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. If you're returning and watching another video, I really appreciate you coming back. If you're new to the channel, I really appreciate you taking the time to check my channel out. If you like it, please hit the like button and subscribe and hit that bell icon if you would like to see future content. Well, we're opening up our third box in our Black Friday sale. This box came in the same day as the last box that I had opened, but I wanted to be able to give you guys a couple videos. This this one is a little bit smaller uh, shipment package. That's why uh, later in the video I'm going to be doing a transfer of some of the ants also. So stick around and to check that part out. Okay, we got our accessories set to the side. Uh, these are the mini hearths, two of them. I, I had ordered the the first group, the four of them. I ordered them, and then that next night, I was thinking, oh, I could use some more. <laughs> and the prices were so good through Tar Hill Ants, I, I went on and ordered the second two of them. You can never have too many. Just in case if you come across a a queen or something that needs to be moved out of one of your test tubes. It's always good to have one side. This tubing I ordered, I was going to use it for helping to hold the two together if I need to combine two when a colony gets really big. Unfortunately, that tubing is the wrong size. <laughs> it was a little bit too small. Uh, my fault. I ordered the wrong wrong size. Okay, we're getting into the, the transfer here. It's not doesn't go all that smoothly. Uh, first off, want to get some stuff around the, the lip so that the ants can't crawl out. The species that are moving, not sure on the species name, but they are good climbers. So I wanted to make sure. This is a mistake that hopefully you can learn from my mistake. Do not fill the water tower ahead of time. Do not do it. It. I don't know why I thought of doing it. I just wanted to get the humidity up, I guess, but I, I, I wasn't thinking. Uh, all you do is you're just making so that you spill water all over. Filling the nest mate, this is okay because it, it's not going to spill out. You always want to make sure that when you're filling the nest mate, though, you put a finger over the screen end while you're filling it because without the plug, the water just runs right back out. So to get that filled up, gives them something to drink if they need it, which the nest I'm moving them out of, it's got a lot of humidity, it had a real humi humidity problem. I, it was my first attempt at making a plaster uh, ant farm in a little container, and it was it, it worked out okay f for a little while, but it, the, it held too much humidity. Plus, as you'll see, it, it not the easiest thing for transferring ants out of. Yeah, with the plastic container that I was using to build the plaster ant nest or ferrocarium in, it was too hard of plastic. It couldn't really effectively make a, a place to put a tube so they could have an outworld for it, which they really needed. Because trying to feed them in this little thing was kind of a pain because the, the lip is so small you drop the fruit flies in or anything like that and they crawl right back out in the ants do too you can't can't put any anything on that to keep the ants from crawling out as you can see it the humidity was really and I hadn't watered that thing I watered it once when I first put them in there and that was probably two months ago <laughs> or something like that yeah, they've been in there a long time, and it holds its humidity really well. If you have a species that needs a lot of humidity, it would be a great formicarium for them. But no, I don't recommend that style. <laughs> it didn't work well. And, and the plaster kind of stuck with the humidity stuck inside, so I couldn't get it to drop out to get the ants to just kind of freely come down. So I had to do some tapping and, and stuff. So... Well, the hurt, ants weren't getting hurt. They were just, it, it was a little bit of a shock. It might have stressed them out a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little more than a little bit. But they, they're they doing really good. And this was quite a few days ago that that 
they were transferred. So as I'm dubbing and editing this in, so nice thing is, is they none of them bit me, <laughs> which I probably deserve to get bit, but they none of them did. So yeah, so they, they're climbing all over the place, and you'll see that there's uh, some males and females that as you can, that you can see running around. Yeah, you can tell they're a little uh, agitated. <laughs> but you know what? You learn from your mistakes. I, I've been keeping ants, studying and stuff since I was five years old. And I turned 45 this year. So 40 years and I'm learning every day, which I, I was never really good at keeping them alive. I was never good. I never had the humidity thing down. And, you know, as a kid, I would always just throw some dirt in a jar, put all the ants in it, and watch them for, for like a month until they, I don't know, they just, they couldn't, they didn't survive very well. That's what I'm so glad I came across, uh, Tar Heel Ants, Max, uh, Mini Hertz, and all the different formicariums that he offers. It just, it helps to where now I can keep the ants to survive. And I'm looking forward to getting some other species, ones that I had gathered at, when I was a kid, at, at, you know, the whole bunch of them that I had queens and really nice colonies and stuff. I just never had the knowledge and the ability to keep them alive. You know, it was like I would study them for while well, I could, you know, and, and as I got older, I had set up, I set up a 35 gallon fish tank and that would, I kept the ants alive in there quite a long time. I had a polyergus uh, colony that had males and females and I had that set up and I had a black ant form, form, uh, formica colony that had nested in the in the fish tank before I had set, put the polyergus in there mm -hmm. and I forgot I had those formicas in there until one day the the polyergus workers started going out in a raid and I, I looked down and I'm like what's going on and all of a sudden they were coming running back out from the other side of the ant farm the the fish tank and they were all carrying eggs so I had a pretty good colony built up uh, for my carry in the um uh, formica black ants as you can see with this that other one there's there's mold up in that chamber so I, I really had to get them out of there it's what I, I was planning on getting them out a lot sooner but uh you know, I had to wait for the the shipments to come in and stuff. So I was luckily enough it, it had the time to get them changed over to their new form of care that night when I got these shipments and I got this this film. So right now they're all kind of just disoriented and but it didn't take too long. I got them set into a dark place with the heating cable under them and they got themselves moved down inside got them some honey and you can see what the one trying to crawl up the side there's two of them they have bundles of eggs bunches of eggs and there's no queen so i'm thinking these must be uh, laying workers i'm hoping that those males and females i don't know when they if they'll mate in the Mini hearth, or if I have to wait until the summer for them to to actually wait for males from another colony to mate with these uh, future queens, we'll see. But thank you so much for sticking through the to the end, and please like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with a, another video. I've got my harvester ants. I'll be transferring uh, to from the test tube to. Uh, a mini hearth that I got with the shipment. I really appreciate your time. You have a great rest of your day, and I will see you the next one.